Hi, this is John McRobert. I'd like to share with you some information on wheat management, especially as regards irrigation. So to begin with, I'd like to explain this graph that I've put up. On the bottom axis, we have the days after planting. We are assuming that we plant on the 20th of May, and if the wheat takes 140 days to mature, that'll mature then on the 7th of October. When we talk about maturity here, we are talking of physiological maturity. That is when the grain has reached its maximum dry matter weight and will no longer increase in size. It's not harvest maturity. From physiological maturity to harvest maturity is another 20 or so days depending on the weather conditions as the grain dries down. At physiological maturity, the crop will have some green leaf in it, but the grains will be dry, the ears will mostly be dry. Now, flowering in wheat occurs around 75 days and that will depend a little bit on the weather conditions and the planting date. So to explain these dates and how they're affected by weather conditions and planting date, I'll take you through two more slides and then we'll come back to this slide. So in this graph we are looking at the effect of planting date on the time to different growth stages of wheat. So on the bottom axis we've got days after planting. When we plant early, around the 25th of April, flowering is earlier than when we plant in mid-May or early June. The reason for that is in April the temperatures are still fairly warm but they are beginning to decline. So when we plant in April the early growth stages are, are hastened because the temperatures are fairly warm. When we plant later, like 15th of May, 5th of June, the temperatures are cool and so the the growth stages are, are delayed. It takes longer to reach flowering. But the opposite is, a, is the case for reaching maturity. So when we plant early, the grain fill period is longest because the grain filling period occurs in July and early August when the temperatures are relatively cool and so the grain filling period is long. But when we plant late, especially into June, the grain filling period occurs during the warming up phase of our winters which would be late August, September and even October and so the grain filling period is shortened or hastened. So the longest maturity of wheat is when you plant early and it may be as much as 130 to 140 days with an early planting and with a late planting it might be decreased to 110 to 120 days. Now let's look at the effect of altitude on the growth stages of wheat. So here again we've got the days after planting, assuming a, a planting date of the 15th of May. And we've got three examples, high felt, middle felt and low felt. So the longest maturity of wheat is obtained on the high felt. That's because it's much cooler uh, compared to the low felt. So the temperatures on the high felt are cool so the time to different growth stages is long especially when you plant early remember when we plant early the temperatures regime is generally fairly cool throughout the season but when you plant in the low felt the time to maturity is hastened significantly and that's simply a, a temperature factor so you can see here the time to maturity has gone from about 140 days on the high felt down to about 110, 115 days on the low felt. And that is going to significantly affect yield. So we get the highest yields on the high felt because of this long growth period. The plant is able to accumulate a lot of carbohydrate and put that into the grain. Whereas in the low felt, the time to maturity is hastened or shortened and therefore the plant cannot simply produce enough dry matter and sugars and carbohydrate to put into the grain. Now with that in mind, let us return to this graph of the estimated daily crop water use for wheat so that we can understand how best to irrigate our crop in a general sense. So in this graph, we have assumed a 20 May planting date and 140 days to maturity. On the graph there are two lines. There's a brown line which is the estimated daily evaporation and a blue line which is the estimated daily crop water use. 
Now I've had to make some basic assumptions here and is this, these two graphs are going to vary significantly from place to place but in general this is what we would expect to find. So with evaporation when we plant on the 20th of May the temperatures are declining towards the end of June, early July and so because of that the evaporation will also decline. Then as soon as temperatures start warming up towards the end of July and into August, September and October, the evaporation rates are going to increase and they'll increase quite significantly or fast, especially in late September and October. Now evaporation is greatly affected by three things. Basically these are the radiation, the temperature and the wind. So the more radiation you have, more sunlight you have, the more evaporation you're going to have. So on a cloudy day, you will have less evaporation. Secondly, you have the effect of temperature. So the cooler it is, the less evaporation there is. That's why in middle of June, early July, the evaporation rates are fairly low. And then thirdly, wind. The more wind there is, the more evaporation you're going to have. So when we get into August and September, the months of Nyamavuvu, the, the wind, windy months, the evaporation rates increase. So the brown line is a pretty standard expectation of how evaporation rates will go through the season. So in June, July, they're going to be around 4 millimeters per day. And as we go into August, they're going to go up to about 5 millimeters per day. And into October, up to 7 or 8 millimeters per day. Now, remember, in the warmer environments, low altitude, this graph will increase, will go up. So in places like Chiredzi, Middle Sabi, the evaporation rates will be around 5 in June, July and going up to 8, 9, 10 in September and October. Whereas in the high altitude areas like Marandera, Harare, this graph might even go down somewhat uh, so that the evaporation rates on a cold, cool, cloudy winter day will be 2 to 3 millimeters per day going up to maybe 5, 6 and possibly 7 millimeters in October. So that's a, a stylized graph. The MET department is, is going to be publishing evaporation data which will help you to, to interpret this graph. Now the blue line is the estimated daily crop water use. Now this is calculated from the evaporation. So that blue line is basically increasing in a curvy linear fashion from 21 days after planting through to maturity. Now I've put on this graph two black lines with arrows on them. So on the left hand side of the first black line we have the crop daily water use less than the evaporation. Then between the two black arrow lines the crop water use is higher than the brown evaporation line and then as the crop goes towards maturity the daily crop water use is less than the daily evaporation. So let's begin on the vegetative period from the 21 days through to flowering. This is where our crop water use is increasing on a daily basis because the crop is growing, the amount of leaf area is increasing, the canopy is closing and around first node through to flowering the crop will be using an increasing amount of water. Then from just before flowering, so that would be early booting through to mid grain fill, the crop is using water at its maximum rate. It's using water at at the same rate or slightly more than the daily evaporation. And then from mid grain fill through to maturity the crop is going to begin to use less water per day compared to the daily evaporation. So now we can use this information, this general knowledge, to guide our irrigation requirements. And what it means is if your crop is say at the early vegetative stage around 30 days to 45 to 50 days it's using between 3 millimeters and 4 millimeters of water per day depending again on the temperature the amount of cloud cover and the amount of wind so if your irrigation system can deliver say 20 millimeters 
and your crop is using three millimeters per day, then your irrigation interval can be around seven days. But now when you get up to late booting, flowering, early grain fill, your crop is using the same amount of water as the, as the evaporative demand, or even slightly more. So if, for example, your crop is now using four to five millimeters a day, and your irrigation system can supply 20 millimeters, but that means you have to have an irrigation cycle of four to five days. Then as you go from mid-grain filling to maturity, your crop is using less water than evaporation, but it's still using a lot of water per day, around, in this case, five and a half millimeters per day. And so again, if you can deliver 20 millimeters per cycle with your irrigation system, you have to have a cycle of four to five days. Now coming back to this 21 day period, this is a very critical time in wheat because at 21 days you begin to tiller and if your crop is or your soil is dry at this point, the tillering will be in, in, impacted. It won't tiller as well as you would want. So if your crop is anywhere around that 21 days at this, on your, when you're listening to this, please ensure that the top of your soil is is moist. So irrigate at 21 days to stimulate tillering. It's also an ideal time to put your first top dressing on and to deal with your weeds. So this is a general example of the way that a wheat crop will utilize water. You can interpret this in your environment. If you're in a warmer environment with higher evaporation rates, then your crop is going to use more water than what's on this graph. If you're in a cooler environment, cloudy days, your crop is going to use less water than what's illustrated in this graph. So I trust this will help you in understanding how best to irrigate your crop. If you want further information, please contact me. So thank you very much for watching. All the very best and have a great winter wheat crop. Bye now.